We're back continuing our conversation with F. King Alexander, president of CSULB. This show is going to be webcast throughout the world as part of the commencement ceremonies of Long Beach State, uh, May 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And I know commencement is one of your favorite uh, uh, times of year. It, it really is, and it, it, if you've never been to one of our commencement ceremonies, it really is like a Mardi Gras. It's a festive atmosphere full of thousands of Mardi people. Mardi Gras, he's thinking <laughs> ahead. Full of thousands of people that, for this may be the only time they ever get an experience of coming onto our campus. And just the energies in the air, but, but more importantly, it's a wonderful culmination of what our students have worked so hard to attain. And you individually shake hands with every student who is there at graduation, uh, I, all nine ceremonies. I will shake probably 9,000 hands from Wednesday morning till Friday evening uh, during those three days, which is, it, it's, it's, it's what I love to do. And many thousands and thousands of parents and family and friends attend the graduation ceremonies, but uh, not everyone can do that. We have students from 100 countries and they watch it uh, on right. the webcast. Right, we've got, we've got st parents and relatives of, of graduates watching all over the world, which uh, we welcome their attendance. We're pleased that we can showcase what, we, what, we, what we're here to do, which is to help them graduate and go on to something bigger and better. And many of our students are first generation college graduates. We're about and, 40 percent, about 40 percent yeah. of our students are first generation And students. you see the pride in the parents and uh, the family in, in, in having this young man or woman uh, graduate. That's one reason why we don't restrict the number of tickets. It's because yeah. most cases, some of our first generation graduates may bring 20, 25 people with them. And we'll have about 10 to 12,000 each event, wow. uh, different attendance at each event. Well, let's switch gears for a moment. I, uh, our guest is an acknowledged expert in higher education finance. And, and you've made many trips to Washington, including uh, meeting with President Obama on this issue of higher education finance. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, I, it, first of all, it was, a, it was a great recognition of our university to be identified as one of six public universities to, to actually advise the president on how we're able to keep students out of debt, graduate students with good degrees, and still keep our pricing well below the national average. And that's really what he was asking us about. How, do, how can we keep doing it, along with Chapel Hill and a few other institutions? And since then, we've worked closely with the, the White House Domestic Policy Group to devise new ways to allocate financial aid and other federal funding levers to not only challenge institutions to keep their costs affordable, but also challenge states so that they don't continue the trends of abandoning their commitments to higher education and their students. That's an ongoing discussion. That's and this is known as maintenance of effort, where if the states try and back out of their support, they're going to be penalized at the federal That's level. That's right. And we, we're in the process of seeing how much money can we get in those types of provisions so that states don't simply take federal money and supplant their own money with that money. Um, it, it's, it's a challenge to the states to, to almost a matching challenge and a federal state partnership that we're hoping to see more of in the next three years. Now you're going to Louisiana State University, you're gonna head up the system and also you'll be the chancellor of the campus at Baton Rouge. Uh, they're a land grant college. I know that that has been, uh, played an important role in, in our history. Speak for a moment about land grant. Well, it's college. interesting, land grant and particularly relevant is last July 2nd, the land grant initiative actually celebrated 150th anniversary and Abraham Lincoln, people talk about difficult times and how we all deal with difficult times and economic. Well, the Congress and Abraham Lincoln created the best public higher education uh, legislation in, in what we know in the OECD world, which was the Great Land Grant Act in 1862, which basically the federal government said they will give certain lands to states if and only if they create public universities to primarily train and educate agricultural scientists, engineers, and many types of degrees that this nation needed. Um, I think that that initiative is still very, very much a part of the arteries and heart and soul of American higher education. And in many ways, I think it's, it's time to reinvent what that land grant mission means to society today in this century. Right. And from, I'm from New York, and I know Cornell is a land grant college in, in, in New York, which is, is prospering. That, that's why Cornell's part public and part private. It's the labor, economics, and agricultural section of Cornell that's public, and that's the ah. land grant part. Well, uh, 
we mentioned earlier, if we short our students, we're shorting the future of our country. And I know that there's a competition for resources. The baby boomers are coming of age and they're uh, heavy advocates of Medicare and all that. But if, if all the money goes to seniors and very little to our students, uh, where are we going to be in 10 or 20 years? Well, that, that is indeed, the big, I think, the biggest question this nation faces right now is that we are on the cusp uh, for the first time in American history leaving our, the next generation with less economic opportunity and educational opportunities than the generation it's before. It's un-American. The, the American dream was each generation improves. Right, and this is the real challenge. And I, quite honestly, I don't want to be part of the generation that, that re basically resets that, that trend to where we're leaving our next generation with less opportunities than we, than and we had. And as sad as I know you are leaving Long Beach State, the beach, but in Louisiana, you're basically heading the entire system, as well as being the chancellor of that particular campus. Right. You'll have a bigger megaphone and voice to articulate these principles. It, it actually, it's, it's, also, it's the land-grant university. It's three additional campuses, LSU campuses, two medical schools, a law school, and, wow. and the agricultural sciences, which has connections in every county or parish in the state. So. Many of the things that I'll be working on there are only going to benefit when I'm in Washington, only benefit students here. So we're going to keep fighting, but we'll just be fighting from a different location to benefit our students and our mission. And we hope that Washington will listen because these principles are so important uh, to the country and, and to the students. I mean, the students that don't get into college, uh, aside from uh, the, the economic impact that they're, we're not turning them into productive taxpayers as, as early as we would like, there's the, the, the moral challenge of, uh, of a life that's not being fulfilled because of the inability to get an education. Well, and, and you see a lot of this, uh, there's a lot of uh, uneasiness about this. The Arab Spring, many have attributed to the fact that young people that did receive some types of educational training. We're not getting the jobs they need. We're not moving in. I mean, they get it. educated here and then go back home they, or? Uh, vice versa, same, same. So here and there. Um, so we're seeing a lot of things starting to, to question how we're functioning as a society. And the fact that our social, really the social mobility of our population has been relatively stagnant now for about 15 years. And so that is a real challenge uh, is, is how are we going to create the, the middle class that is based on a continual social mobility that this nation was really founded to create for so many. And the answer is? Well, it's going to be education. And, and the, the challenge we have is to make sure that our states stay vested in this challenge and not remove themselves from their responsibilities to the generations on so the way. So you believe passionately that, that, that education is critical and support of education is critical to the, the future health of our society. Well, I, I, I think the greatest, the, the, one of the greatest policies we developed was the great GI Bill after World War II. And it, it showed, it de clearly demonstrated, and there was a lot of naysayers about the GI Bill that said that these, if we allow these veterans to come back and go to colleges and universities and then they hit the job market, they're going to push us back into a Great Depression because there won't be enough jobs. What they failed to recognize is by educating the veterans when they came back, that group of veterans created an entirely new economy, new businesses, new industries. They used their human capital and their talent to create a new economy for, for America. That's what they, under, they underestimated when at the beginning of the GI Bill, and thank goodness we went through with it and went through to, to, to adopt it, and our economy has benefited ever since. I'm thinking that Henry Ford, uh, of, uh, creator of the production line, paid his workers the unheard of price of $5 a day, I think it was back then, twice or three times as much as, and people said, you're crazy. But he created uh, the economic basis so that these workers could buy Ford cars. Uh, you see, it, 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 it's cyclical. The whole yeah. thing is cyclical. And, yeah. and the more we educate students, the more we educate the next generation, the more jobs, the more their minds will create an entirely new economy that's, that's more modern, that's more futuristic, that, that is exactly what we need in many of our states. And you look at the transformation of lives right here on our campus. Uh, uh, they, uh, how many 
lives are transformed each and every year as we graduate this, this new crop of students. Exactly, and then in addition to that, the fact that the earnings capacity of a graduate has never been better than it is today. The earnings capacity of a high school student that doesn't pursue college has never been worse. Yeah. So we not only have to help these students get enrolled, but we have to help them finish what they start. And that's what we do here very well. Yeah. Well, I'd like to just take a moment before our, our show ends to publicly thank uh, President Alexander for his contribution to our campus and to our community. Uh, uh, the seven and a half years that he's been here uh, has been one of great growth and excitement here on campus and uh, uh, he's made a real difference as I'm sure he will down in Louisiana. So uh, uh, a public thanks for a job well done while you're well, here. Thank you Art, it's because we have so many great people that have made this happen yeah. for all of us. Well, we have about a minute or so left in the show and I just want to give it to you to say whatever you want to the Long Beach community, to us here on campus, whatever you want. Well, I'd just like to thank Long Beach. It, it is one of the, this country's greatest hidden gems. And uh, we found that out when we, get, when we arrived here. We love Long Beach, we love the people here. The university is, will always hold a special place in our hearts. And we'll be back an awful lot. We're, we're, not, we're not leaving for good, we're gonna be back quite a bit. We have so many great friends here, but, but it's just a really hidden gem that the rest of the country is discovering that more, more of my colleagues throughout the United States hear more and more of because of the way the city and the university functions together. So I just thank everybody for their commitment to our university and our students. Well, we will miss you and we thank you. And I know that, as you mentioned, you will be fighting the good fight down in Louisiana for, for students throughout the country uh, to see that, uh, that they get the education that they need and deserve. Certainly, certainly will. How, that, that, that is my pledge for a lifetime. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Art. And thank you for joining us. Uh, please be with us again next week. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by Southern California Edison, the Press-Telegram, and remember, Straight Talk is viewable worldwide 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.